Hello and welcome to another episode of the Feather and Football podcast with me, Luke Feather. Today I'm joined by George Newell. Hello. Hello. And uh, we're going to be talking about Aston Villa. Yeah, um, specialist so, subject. <laughs> specialist subject, as we saw from the quiz the other week. Um, so, obviously, you've just escaped relegation. First season back in the Premier League. Um, Maybe a little bit too close for comfort. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> what's your immediate reaction to that? Um, yeah, I, I, I never really lost all faith. I think even when we were seven points adrift with four games to go, I thought the running we had sort of meant it could happen. But I didn't enjoy any part of the West Ham game, apart from when Grealish scored. But, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's, uh, I feel like we, we're in a much better place now. I still expect us to be in some sort of relegation battle, but I think we'll be in the Premier League for a while now. It's, it was very touch and go, especially. I, I know you spent so much time in the in the relegation zone. You basically did. You did. Yeah. It, you, you did a positive sort of, a bit like what Leicester did, but in a positive way. Um, of course, yeah. Ben dropping out in the last last few games or so. Um, so one of the major talking points of the relegation battle was uh, the first game back after the restart in Sheffield United. Yeah. The, the goal that wasn't. Um, a big slice of luck for Villa staying up, would you say? Um, I, I don't know about that, because those things sort of tend to even themselves out over 38 games. I think the amount of questionable VAR calls we've had against us, I think a lot of clubs could say that, but I know... It's, it, it, I think it's been talked about because it's the first floor in goal line technology. But in terms of refereeing decisions, like that, they've decided a lot of relegation battles in the past, I think. Yeah, and then obviously that's led into Bournemouth potentially um, filing a lawsuit against Hawkeye. Now, I was immediately pretty sceptical about that, to be fair, because yes, it is unlucky, but there's so many variables that would have... It's basically saying that is the only thing. Like, if, if that goal yeah. had gone in for Sheffield United, who's to say that Villa wouldn't have then pushed on and scored an equal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, yeah. again, they they went... Bournemouth are down there because they've not been good enough this season and yeah, they've gone exactly. down as a result. Yeah, uh, they got 34 points, didn't they? So. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's a little bit desperate if they were to, yeah. were to go through with it, but... Um, yeah, no new news on that anyway. Um, so looking forward to next season. Obviously, it's going to be big. Second season back in Premier League. It's always going to be tough because you've you've sort of, uh, you've steadied yourself. Yeah, all right, it was a bit bit close, but the bottom line is you've stayed up, uh, spent a lot of money last year, and yeah. apparently significant funds, uh, as being quoted today, significant funds are being made available for a new striker. Uh, are there any names that you would go for or anyone that you would um, I don't know I think a decent Premier League striker is going to is going to be costing you around 30 million at least I think um, I don't know it, just the the buying from different leagues hasn't worked um, Wesley was starting to look like he like a better player a, a few games before his injury but I don't know I always like watching Giroud play Someone like that would be such a benefit to us. I think, like if if he wants to keep Tammy because he's a bit younger and he brings in Werner, maybe maybe a little bit wishful thinking. But I'd love to see him at Villa. The uh, thing is, if if you had said that to me in January when it was all it was looking all but done that Giroud was going to leave Chelsea, then yeah. I, I could maybe see him leaving to another Premier League club a bit further down the table. But since the restart, Giroud, I think he's scored yeah. like seven goals or something in the league. He's been critical for Chelsea. I, just, I can't really see him leaving at the minute. No, no. Um, but where where would that leave you? If you were to sign, a, a let's say, a £30 million striker, someone that you would hope, well, obviously, whenever you sign a striker, you're going to hope for 20 goals. But for, for that sort of money, uh, where would that leave you with uh, Samata and uh, Wesley? Um. I think Wesley would be the, the priority purely because we saw a bit less of him um, and they spent more money on, on him. But they're going to, this is the thing, we've spent so much money 
on a, quite a few players who don't look good enough. But because we've had them that recently, I think we're going to struggle to get rid of them. We spent ten million on Samata in January. I don't think they're going to get get rid of him in the summer because he's got so many years on his contract. It's going to cost a lot. But I don't know. I I, I like Keenan Davis as well, but maybe he's one you could loan out. I'm not sure. I've I've not seen a great deal of Keenan Davis, but I will admit what what I have seen of him. He, he looks he looks like there is a player in there, and I feel yeah, like, yeah. I feel like as soon as he gets one, he'll go on a roll. But yeah, definitely. I think he's I with Samara. I don't really know what he is. He's not quick enough to run in behind, and he's not sort of strong enough to hold the ball up. Whereas you you bring Keenan on, you know how you're going to play. Like you get the ball into his feet, and people run off him. Whereas I don't see that with Tamara at all. Uh, of course, I, I, I never like talking about this uh, with other people, their clubs, but there is one big transfer rumour that's going yeah. to linger around uh, Aston Villa for the whole summer until yeah. until he, either the deadline or until he leaves. Jack Greer. Yeah. Uh, one, one, of, one of the sort of factors, but I don't know whether this is accurate or not, but one thing that I've always thought is if Villa go down, he'll definitely definitely leave because yeah. he's a Premier League player. Uh, but if Villa stay up, he might have one more year and try and push for maybe a mid-table finish. Uh, what do you think will happen with Jack Grealish? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd expect him to stay another year. Um, I think United were the, were the main people he's been linked with. I know Arsenal have sort of declared an interest recently, but like he, he, the impact that Fernandez has had, he wouldn't be starting in that Man U team where I think he probably would have been at the start of the year or sort of the first half of the season. Um, but I don't know. I think especially because he scored the goal as well against West Ham, I think that'll probably be the best feeling he's had on a football pitch. And I think he will def- we'll get another year out of him at least. It's it, it's a question of where he would actually play at Man U as well because like. Like you've mentioned, they've, they've signed Fernandez. It's been an absolute revelation for them. So yeah. it's not like they're going to tamper with him. Like Fernandez is going to stay in the number ten. Yeah. Um, but Grealish has played a lot of his season out on the out on the left wing, hasn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and obviously, Man U have been linked so heavily with Jaden Sancho. It's it's sort of will they go for Sancho or Grealish or will Grealish play in midfield or will play on the wing? So there's so many questions, really. Yeah, I think it's more. He, he does start at left wing for Villa, but that's sort of to get him on the ball higher up the pitch, whereas sort of Rashford and Greenwood's job is to run him behind and stuff. It's a, although it's out wide, it's a different kind of role. Oh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a different sort of winger, but it, it'd be more of sort of the wide playmaker, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, I, I expect him to stay. Well, it might just be wishful thinking, but I think I, we'll get another year. I think one thing that will work in your favour is it's been talked about a lot, but the potential, well, the massive financial impact of the coronavirus situation. And I've, yeah. I've, read, I've read today that Villa are going to try and hold out for £80 million. Uh, £80 million yeah. pounds for him. Yeah, I can so see that. With that sort of price tag, it's, I, I'd, I've seen Arsenal link today, and I, I, just, I can't see Arsenal spending £80 million on one player. No. Oh. I wouldn't want to see him go for anything less than seventy million. But it's like it's like Palace with Zahar. I think like we've got all the power just because we need him that much and we can sort of charge what we like. Like even the big clubs can afford Zahar because Palace can afford to lose him. That's it. It, it. With a team like with a team like Palace and Zahar, they do rely heavily on him so much that I think that his price tag is is what it is because of the price of relegation. Yeah, yeah, effectively. Like, like, yeah. Not being disrespectful to the rest of Crystal Palace players, but without Saha, where would they be in his influence? He, he's yeah. he's their go-to like talisman, and it's the same with Grealish. So, yeah, definitely. It, it's just like imagine where Villa would be this year without Grealish. Down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so moving on to someone else that knows Villa very well, um, obviously the manager Dean Smith. Um, yeah. Perhaps surprisingly, given like recent patterns of Premier League clubs when they've been in and in and about the relegation zone for a, a lot a lot of the season, you're stuck with him, which is credit to Villa because it's 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 paid off. Um, yeah. How do you see the club moving forward with him as manager? 
Um, I think you will have. I think you will have learnt a lot from this year. I think to stay up in your first season as a Premier League manager is is a good achievement with the squad he had. I think I would. I wouldn't be getting rid of him anytime soon. I don't think, um, especially sort of the way we, the way we were getting through managers before he came, and I think. He's, if you look at some of the players that look like players he would have bought have been the better signings. People like Conza that came from Brentford look like decent bits of business, I think. It, like, like you mentioned, in recent years, you have chopped and changed your manager that often. It's, it's sort of offering a bit of stability for the club, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, the, the homegrown manager and the same with players, they always get a little bit more of a chance. I think people will be more lenient with them. Yeah, especially with his Villa influence, obviously he's a Villa fan, and yeah. the, the fans the fans seem to be behind him as well. So it, it, I don't think it'd go down well if he'd yeah. have been sacked. And no, no, he's done he's done everything we've asked of him really since he's come in. I mean, we beat Blues twice. We had won ten games in a row, which was a club record, even if it wasn't the Championship. Um, went up through the playoffs when we looked like finishing mid table, and then. Uh, beat beat baggies on the way to the playoffs, which was nice, and then and then stayed up in our first season. So he kind of done much more. I don't think. Yeah. And uh, but one man who has left the club is a sporting director, uh, Jesus Garcia Pitark. Um, what what do we know about this? Um, yeah, uh, there was. I was I was said like it was the same when we went down. Uh, four seasons ago that it was the recruitment that let us down and it would just seem to be buying that sort of same kind of player the sort of young unproven player from other leagues which although they've got potential I don't think they're gonna they, they're gonna sort of I don't know well I didn't think they'd keep us up but they did just about if you know what I mean but we were appointed someone today who's been at Copenhagen for Six years, technical director. Um, I don't know much about him, to be honest. But it's always a thing when a, a different club they get given different sort of titles, but they all do a similar yeah. sort of job. Yeah. Um, that's really it's it's. It, I think it varies at different clubs, like what their responsibilities are. So I suppose yeah. we're just gonna have to wait and see on that one. Yeah, I think the the days of like like the manager buying all the players has sort of gone they've got sort of too much to take on now like there won't be many people like Alex Ferguson who literally control everything at the club I think they, they have to delegate a lot more yeah exactly um, so uh, moving on to something a bit more positive than all the relegation talk we've talked about <laughs> in the last three years you've been to Wembley three times that can't be bad really no no nice day out of course. Uh, so, why why do you think that is? I mean, you've got to the final of the League Cup this year. Obviously, the other two are through the playoffs, so ideally you don't really want to be going back to Wembley for that reason. Yeah, yeah. But um, do you think Villa are the sort of club that are targeting Cups? Um, I think so, yeah. I think this is probably the the club's longest spell without a trophy. I'm not, not sure, but it must be pretty close. I think League Cup in 1996 was the last thing we won, and it's going to be <laughs> going to be a very long time before we win the league. So yeah, um, seems. But, but for a side like for a side like Aston Villa, obviously it's got such history, such a big club. Do you think if you were to, I know Man City have basically owned the League Cup for the last three or four years, whatever. Yeah. It's been, but um, do you think just winning, just doing well in the cup, sort of uh, going in the right direction? Do you think it can sort of bring that? Bring that feel around Villa Park again, sort of. Sort I think of so. On yeah. the way back. Uh, yeah, because you get them them sort of big nights at Villa Park, like the like when we beat Leicester in the semi final, and yeah, definitely because you don't have that that tension of a relegation battle. Like a cup is nice to win if you know what I mean. Whereas like a relegation fight, you have to win. Right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, be uh, something they're looking at. I think definitely. Yeah. Um, so, just to finish. Moving on to next season. Obviously, it's going to be a it's going to be a slightly different transfer window. You might not expect every club to be splashing the cash like we have seen in the last few years. Uh, where yeah. do you think Villa need to strengthen, 
And is, is there any dream signings of yours? Um, I think if so, Rainer's loan will finish, and Tom Heaton will come back in. I think that that's that's fine. I think I'd be looking at another centre half. I, I quite like Conzer and House, but if Mings get in, gets injured, I don't want the two of them playing together. I don't Do you think, think Mings will stay? I think so. Yeah. Um, I think this is the with sort of the first club where he's had regular first team football. I know he's had like bad luck with injuries, but I think he's grown quite attached to Willock who gave him a bit of an opportunity. Um, but and then it's, it's that same issue again though, because some like someone like Matt Target, who we bought pretty recently, doesn't look good enough. But I think he's still only twenty four, so maybe maybe he'll come good. But yeah. I don't know, possibly a left back, but definitely, definitely a winger. That'd be my like my main priority. I think I would have would have wanted Trezeguet to go had it not been for his last three or four games. But yeah, yeah that's where I'd be looking. Really. One name that I've seen linked today is um, Hiernacho from uh, Leicester. <laughs> what are you thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it sounds good, but he's he's not one of them players that's been relied on to score goals for a team. But we do need that kind of pace up front because there's, there's nothing about our front three that sort of gets in behind the team. I would say with Ian Acho, he's never, he's never been the main striker at a club. Well, he's been yeah. in the Premier League anyway. Uh, obviously, when he was at Man City, there was no chance he was getting in the team over Aguero. No, no. And obviously, Vardy's been doing the business for Leicester. So maybe if he's one of those players where if he gets a proper run, it seems like a proper poacher and he can he can he's yeah, always he's in, he's in the right place at the right time, but it's just about a running side, I think. Yeah, he'd be he'd be a better option than what we have, but I think it it'd still be a little bit of a gamble. But I don't know, I still think Villa are a big enough club that we can that if we buy from clubs around us they're still gonna wanna come to Villa like like people like Lewis Dunk would be like a would be a great signing, I think. I think Although Brighton have finished above us, it'd be a bit of a step up for him, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it sort of uh, there's more potential there with the, yeah, the project yeah. of the club. I think while, while you mentioned Brighton, I do think they've acted quickly so far in the transfer window. They've signed Adam Lallana. I've seen them yeah. signed uh, Joel uh, Joel Veltman from Ajax as well. I think that's two great signings, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But uh, maybe with them signing Veltman, that's a sort of maybe a, maybe alongside the expectancy that offers might come in for Lewis Dunk yeah I think so I, I think generally the clubs that buy the earliest they they sort of they do well um, they get their business done early they get the players they want and and then they're set for the season really and they get like a month of training with their new players but, absolutely but yeah, yeah two really good signings and um, so just to finish realistically where do you think Villa should be looking to finish next season um, I still I still expect us to be in a relegation fight of some sort I would think um, I don't think it'll be as tight as this one I think sort of maybe with two or three games of the season left we'll we'll sort of be safe it's still so the, 40, sort of, the 40 point mark that you're looking for then yeah I think so sort of more like more like 14th than 16th or 17th I think that and then build on that, I think. But. Yeah, it's just about heading in the right direction, really. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, that's been the Feather and Football podcast with uh, me and George. Thanks for coming on, George. Yeah, thank you for having me. No problem. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you did like it, uh, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.